All right, what is going on, guys? It is time for another episode of the Chasing Waypoints podcast, and we are back. Dakar hangover, we've talked about it already. It is over, and we are back into the swing of things. Have you guys heard our recent episodes? Should be keeping up. You should be following the playlist, following the channel. You know what's going on. You guys are listening and subscribe to the podcast. You also know what is up, and you guys are the OGs. And if you're watching this on YouTube, jump on over. There's a whole playlist of a whole lot of podcasts, 180, some 190 episodes. But as they say, dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to talk to none other than Ross Branch. If you guys saw the intro, saw the title, you know who we are talking to today. And we are talking to the number two guy at the 2024 Dakar Rally. Absolutely excited to have him on there. Huge shout out to Lissy for making it happen, getting everybody coordinated. Hey, this nine to five thing, you know, until I cut a Joe Rogan type deal. Wait, can I say that? Yeah, until I cut a deal like that with Spotify, it's going to be a whole nother story. But for now, let's see if we could get our guy on the line. We're going to be talking again, once again, Ross Branch, Hero Motorsports Rally Team Racer. And we're going to be talking a little bit about what his experience was at the Dakar. And I'm curious, I, I want to go all the way back. How did he get started? How did all of this happen? That is what we're going to be talking about today. So absolutely excited about it. Let's get him going. Let's get the technology queued up here. Now bear in mind, he is 10 hours ahead of us. So he's already into Friday. Good morning, Mr. Branch. Good morning. <laughs> oh, good evening to you guys. How's it going? I know. Right? I literally just said that he's 10, hour, he's 10 hours ahead. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a time change. And, and I'm, used to, I'm used to being up at three in the morning here, which I think would be what, uh, one in the afternoon, your time? Somewhere around there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere there. Yeah, something like that. So, oh, man. So, well, okay, first of all, she will absolutely kill me if I don't say it. Uh, Lizzie said hello. <laughs> so, so. Thank you so much. And, and a huge hello to Lizzie. Yeah. It's like, if, if I don't say it, I, I, I won't hear the end of it. And that's okay. She's, big, she, she's my, she's my adopted big sister. So, <laughs> so we're always having fun. That's awesome. So <laughs> awesome. Uh, how, how are you doing? I mean, are you, are, are we fully recovered? No more blisters, no more, no more sore ass. Everything is it's, back. <laughs> <laughs> the body is actually feeling amazing to tell you the truth. It's been, uh, it's been a bit crazy, you know, coming back to Botswana and obviously, um, uh, motorsport in Botswana is not that big. So, so something like this is, has exploded, you know, and really, really been, been incredible since I've been home. So it's been super busy every day. I've had something on the go and, uh, yeah, I started, uh, getting back on the bikes and getting ready because we have Abu Dhabi and, in two weeks time so yeah i'm feeling good feeling strong and uh this you know i've changed up a lot of things last year so so um yeah the body is feeling really good and obviously things are going going well and and what we did last year we've got to carry on doing this year because i'm feeling really good nice very nice and so that i mean that that was a big one so i've been uh, like this whole afternoon i've been watching interviews and just finding out a little bit more and i mean there, there's really there's two big things uh the more important story to me is how you got started in rally. You know, we wanted to talk about that, but, <laughs> but my, my, my first question is, is, is that is about the bike. I know you've, I've seen a lot of interviews and all of a sudden hero motorsports is on the, you know, on the radar. They're like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. But, but you, it's, you ride a very, I mean, the bike is unobtainium. I mean, you can't, even if you had an American express black card with the best working relationship, <laughs> I doubt I can go anywhere and swipe that card and get that bike that you're on. So tell me, I mean, is that a little bit different for you? I mean, considering, you know, coming from some of the other brands where, you know, the the development is different, I would imagine, and the bike handling and the different things. I mean, how's that journey been? Definitely. For you? 
it's it's been probably one of the best things I've ever done, you know, and and so amazing for me because coming from from Africa, you know, we don't really get the opportunity to get on a factory machine, and it's really difficult to get on a factory team. So, um, you know, joining Hero, it's a it's such a young team; they're only seven years old, and and this was I think the seventh or eighth Dakar. So it's really really young, and we have so much development to do. And um, as you said, it's completely prototype bike. Yeah. You can't buy them. Uh, when I spoke to the team, uh, you know, I think uh, they'd only made uh, 12 or 15 bikes since the beginning. So it's really young. And um, it's, it's been a, it's been a pleasure, you know, it's, it's been so, so, you know, awesome working with the team and developing a bike and, and trying to like sort the bike out exactly how my riding style will fit it. And uh, it's been, it's been one hell of a journey and, and one really interesting journey for me, but I'm so proud and privileged to be on such an amazing, team you know the team is definitely like a family and uh, they do anything and everything for you and we've been doing a lot of testing um down in in namibia now which is which is such a cool testing and training ground so yeah we've done we've done a lot of work to the bike in the past in the past year but um you know they've they've started off with such a good base that uh, that it was really easy for me to get on the bike and and go as fast as I could. Yeah. Uh, we just had to work on like the small things. You know it wasn't anything big. We didn't have to change anything like uh, massively, but uh, the the small things we work, we worked on. And uh, I'm so comfortable with the bike now. And I think a lot of that has to do with with the people that are that are managing and running the team. Uh, the mechanics are awesome. The the engine guys are really cool. The suspension guys are awesome. So it's uh, you know when Whenever I go riding my bike, it's like so much fun because we come back with so much information and there's so many different things that we can try try and test and do and stuff like that. So it's it's been really an amazing ride for me. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can carry this on for the next couple of years and hopefully I can give back a little bit with some some information on the bike and if we can uh, you know get get uh, get better than we are now that's that's awesome so we just got to keep on moving forward there's obviously a lot we can still do with the bike and then change it up a little bit so yeah looking forward to the next couple of years yeah i mean that is and it's you know that was one of the curiosities right it's it, i've always wondered that like you the the bike that you came from you know, was, was there a moment when you threw the, you know, the first time you threw a leg over it and it was kind of like, okay, well, you know, let, I guess let, let's see how this goes. <laughs> 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 for sure you know it's uh, it's coming coming from such a huge manufacturer like Yamaha was was you know it's it's such a big brand in the world and and obviously their factory teams are are really you know top of their game so so coming from Yamaha and going to to Hero was was obviously a big step for me and and really not knowing what to expect you know you go on to on to from a team that you've got 200 or 300 people working on the rally program and uh, then you go to to a team where you've got 20 people working on the rally program so it's a huge step but uh, those 20 people have have all the knowledge and experience and and they've they've really really worked well together and they've uh, put together a, pa a really amazing package and yeah like I say it was it was so big for us as as an entire team to do what we did at Dakar now and I think just for the brand itself um, you know I was, I was lucky enough to fly over to India just after the race and uh, you know they were so appreciative of what we've done and that was the main thing you know when you can see that when you can see that uh, gratefulness if you want to call it in a better word uh, the, from from everybody from Hero uh, it was it was really um, a memory that I'll never forget in my life so so yeah it was it was a big step and obviously a, a big question mark because you because you're going from such a such a huge team to, to a smaller team but um, it shows that anything is possible and uh, you know the guys are working so hard so it was really cool for all of us yeah I mean it was I, I can only imagine it uh, <laughs> Pun intended, a hero's welcome, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to, to be able to, yeah. know, to show up. And, and I mean, it, it, that I mean, it always amazes me. I'm, I'm, I try and be a little bit more of the tech and the nerdy. And like you said, you know, like the little things, right. The shifter being in just yeah. the right place, the wheelbase being just right, you know? And yeah, what's interesting is, is to me in, in, in kind of seeing all this is okay. So hero has its choice. The, all they do is build this race bike, those 20 people, that's all they do. And when everybody is kind yeah. of switching gears and going to a motocross frame, obviously the Austrian bikes and uh, Yamaha before they left the Dakar, you know, on the MX frame, 
the previous generation Austin Austrian bikes being on a ladder frame that it, I believe yeah. that's once under the cover on the hero bike. So they, <laughs> I think that's exactly it. Okay. So, so, I mean, yeah. what are the, what are the big, diff- like, is the MX frame going to be the future or it, it really is a toss yeah. up? You know, it's uh, it's. I, I really think it is going to be the future, um, just because of the way that rally is going at the moment. They're trying to slow it down. They're trying to make it more tight, more technical. So I think the the smaller bike, if you want to call it that, is is definitely the way that everybody seems to be going at the moment. Obviously, we've seen Honda come out with a brand new bike, which is incredible for for this Dakar, you know. And uh, and yeah, our bike is is amazing, but we do have to we have to move with the times. And obviously, we've got to test out the the M frame and see see what the differences will be um you know we have been doing a lot of testing and uh i think there's a, a lot more to come in the near future but um i'm really happy with the bike you know we we actually did a report now um just after dakar and and uh, just gave my feelings on what the bike was like and i i really feel that the bike was so stable at high speed and and exactly where i wanted it uh, yeah sure you know when we get into the tight dunes and and uh, the tough sections it's it's a little bit bigger than the other bikes but um yeah we've also got a few more liters of fuel that we carry so so you know we don't have to worry about the the uh, distances of the fuel Mm -hmm. so i think all in all we've got a really good package but you know this is racing and you can never stop and you can never stop testing and moving forward so i think the other guys are are moving forward every single day so we we're going to do the same thing and carry on testing and see which is better and who knows maybe we will come out with a with a with a mx type of frame or maybe we're just gonna stay with this one um only time will tell but like i say at the moment we are we are in a really good place and uh yeah i think i think for this year we're gonna definitely see what we can do to change it up but uh yeah the bike is super good at the moment yeah i I feel like that's the uh i i feel like that is a very hard thing to do i mean obviously the results have been climbing and you put it together and i mean and (laughs) and first of all you know i didn't say first of all but you know it's congratulations i mean a a second at the the world (laughs) the world's absolute toughest race you know to pull off a second on on the bike i mean it's just it's it's cool to see that okay you know there if you watch the progression it hasn't been a like a super high super low super high super low it's been more of like the steady climb and the steady pace and then all of a sudden it was like well, there's Ross once again on the podium. Look where he's at. There he's at again. There he's again. It's consistent every time. I mean, I, I, I think yeah, I think... Uh- I think that's what we've been working towards. You know, consistency is what's winning rallies these days. And you can see that with Ricky and, and with the guys, Toby, all those guys are so consistent and, and those guys are always at the top of the log, you know? So, so we needed to work on uh, reliability issues uh, from last year. You know, we had some small things go, go wrong with fuel pumps and stuff like that. So, so that's this year we've done over 13,000 kilometers in the Namibian desert and, and just been doing the reliability stuff. And uh, yeah, we know that the bike's got the speed to, to be up there for sure but uh, we needed to make sure that every day we're in the game and uh, you know that's uh, for hero it was it was huge that we were there every day but for us as a team it was it was really really um, you know we've been putting in the work so so we are kind of expecting a good result obviously the podium was 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 there but we we're like kind of like waiting you know like is it out of reach or is it there this year so so for us it, it was a huge thing you know we just wanted to go to get a top five and and just be in the game and show the guys that we got we got what it takes and uh yeah everything just worked so well and and we didn't have any issues with the bike you know there was there was a big thing over so many kilometers it's so easy for something to happen to the bike so we just needed that to go right and and i think they've they've ironed out uh, all their their small issues that they needed to sort out from last year's dakar to this year's dakar so you know we we were definitely moving up and moving forward and consistently we're getting better and better and and also from my side you know i've tried to take a step back and not just be motocross style flat out every day and then end up in my, on my head or, or out of the race so so yeah i think uh, we changed a lot but uh i think we we definitely needed as a team and and obviously you know with uh, i think it was five or six hondas chasing us down the entire rally it was it was important for for the one and only hero to be in the mix there yeah they, i mean they were trying i mean they stacked the cards in their favor with with six riders you know coming into it and for sure and that and that's good but i mean this is the it's like the david versus goliath thing you know it's it's a a, a smaller brand 
you know, going at it. And I mean, and that I, to me, I, uh, I just absolutely think that's awesome. And to, like I said, you know, I, I heard in one of the interviews, you know, carving the bike out and making sure that everything is just right and the ergonomics and all of that stuff. Cause what you're asked to do, you know, it's not only the, the <laughs> it's not only the all out <laughs> speed, it's the fact that you got to look down at some point to say like, am I going the right way? <laughs> Like, for sure you, you know i think a lot a of people forget that <laughs> yeah it's all yeah, fun and games until you ride comfortable up. yeah it's all fun and games until you ride up into the sunset and then we got an issue <laughs> hey, yeah, on exactly. the phone, checking it. in we miss you where have you been <laughs> why are you going in the wrong direction why are you going Come in the wrong on. direction you realize the map ends over there <laughs> <laughs> we don't have land use that's permits. exactly it yeah it, it just turns into this big show you know and so so it's, yeah it's definitely been interesting so okay so now the the the, the real part of it then there's i i finally figured it literally i'll tell you right now it literally took me like six interviews to figure out where the kalahari ferrari <laughs> came from <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, okay, it's probably got to do with something like because he's just so fast, you know, because you're thinking Ferrari and he's fast. And then, and then oh, some that's, interview that's talking. Awesome. So, so for those playing the home game, tell us about the uh, the nickname. Where, what does it mean and where it's, did it come from? <laughs> it's it's actually it's a, such a such a special name to me. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think the Ferrari part had anything to do with the speed. If you know where my name came from. <laughs> <laughs> so in Botswana, uh, you know, our back in the day, our transport was a was a donkey cart. So so it's a little trailer to- towed behind a donkey, and uh, we still see that often often today, especially when I'm riding out in the bush and doing some road books. And uh, we have a, a famous race in, in Botswana called the Toyota Desert Race. It's a thousand kilometers through through the Kalahari Desert. And uh, I was in the middle of nowhere at a, at a refuel and uh, one of these, these uh, donkey carts came past with a really old guy on it. And uh, he stopped and he's been watching me for a couple of years and he said, uh, yeah, you know that uh, our transport is called uh, the Kalahari Ferrari and uh, you definitely the fastest Kalahari Ferrari I've ever seen in my life. So keep it up and keep on going. We, we, we're rooting for you. And I was just like, you know what? It was so cool that, that uh, their, their, uh, their transport is called the Kalahari Ferrari because it's a donkey towing in yeah. a cart and, and, and they just gave me the name. And yeah, it's stuck with me ever since and it's actually got a good meaning behind it. So it's a really it's cool a, name. It's always, yeah. Some, <laughs> some you'll never forget. So I like, I literally, I'm like, it has has to be i'm like i'm racking my brain trying to figure it's got and i'm i'm usually pretty good with riddles and i'm like okay this got to be something and then i hear that video and i'm like oh you got to be kidding me really <laughs> it's something out of the blue and you'd never think of it it's like uh yeah but it's it's really special and obviously being in botswana at the time and and uh you know the the old man uh, giving me that nickname it meant a lot you know so so it's uh yeah stuck with me ever since and uh yeah it's pretty cool and the i'll send you a picture the picture's pretty cool too so i'm really nice. happy with the nickname <laughs> very nice so it, the and that that brings another so running road books like okay i i know i believe you used to be or still are an airline pilot or you still fly fly planes right <laughs> yes okay so, yeah still flying still flying so i yeah. mean how do you like what is the training for the dakar what is training what is being part of the hero like what's the ross side of this you know not the hero side <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's uh, such a good question because uh, a lot of people thought I'd stop flying as soon as, you know, as soon as uh, I'd signed with, with Yamaha and with Hero. So then, uh, you know, I'm extremely lucky and it just works out so well that our world championship um, has a has a long break. This year, we, we've got four four months of, of a break um, just in the off season while it's summertime. Mm-hmm. And uh, it it fits in perfectly with us because in Botswana in the Okavango Delta is a is a huge tourist area. So so during our off season, I go and fly for a couple of months and uh, yeah, just taking tourists in and out of the out of the Delta to to some some amazing lodges out there. And uh, it's it's cool for me, you know. I'm really proud of of my country and uh, I love Botswana. So for me to go and take tourists around and show them show them how beautiful our country is and and uh, give them an experience of a lifetime. 
time is is really cool. And uh, I'm, I work with a company called Mackey, and uh, my boss is is such a nice guy. You know, they've got such a good deal with me that um, when I'm training during the season, I don't fly, and and I just focus on racing and rally. And then when I when I've got an off season, I fly, and uh, they gave me two days a week uh, off just to go and do my training and keep on doing some road books and stuff. So it's a bit of a balance and a bit of a you know just a just a change in the scenery for for a month or two and yeah i really enjoy it it's it's beautiful to fly airplanes and especially up there in the delta seeing all the wild animals every day and and taking people on a trip for a lifetime is is really special to me so yeah uh, you know after racing uh, i want to do something so that's definitely the plan is is to go fly fly some more but at the moment, I've got a I've got a really cool life where I get to fly half the year and I get to race motorbikes out half of the year. So I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just basically flying around everywhere on desert, two wheels, whatever, airplane, whatever. You, know? yeah. you just fly. Everywhere. I just try not. I just try not crash the plane as much as I crash my bike. That's the main thing. <laughs> that sound, that is sound advice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a pretty good plan yeah. to me. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of our, a lot of the, a lot of the guys that listen to this, so the, the, the podcast, the chasing waypoints podcast, it's always kind of, I've always geared it more towards the beginner guy, the, 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 yeah. all of us, the, the rookies and all stuff. So what was that like? When did the first road book happen? I mean, all the way back to that. What, how did you even stumble into this? I mean, I do. I am fully aware that rally racing is bigger everywhere else in the world than in the U.S. In the U.S., it's like yeah. soccer. It's not really <laughs> people dabble in it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and it's and it's so crazy because I think there's so many beautiful places in the US to ride road books and stuff like that. And I think Ricky and Skylar have really taken rally to the next level. So I think it's gonna blow up there, you know. But um I think Botswana may be giving the US a bit of a go for for not having no rallies, you know. <laughs> there's okay. there's absolutely no rally or any kind of that kind of event in Botswana. So we just got like the the Baja kind of racing, the same as you guys have there. So it was always, you know, we watched uh, the Dakar Rally in 1992 when I was really young. I went to 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 watch it with my dad because at that time it was going from Dak, uh, Dakar to Cape Town. So my dad drove me 3,000 kilometers to watch literally one day of racing and just watch them cruise past us. And I always wanted to do it from then on. And, um, you know, then I, I I needed to go the right direction. I couldn't just go straight into rally at a really young age. So, so I was a professional motocross rider. I lived in Germany for six years. Years and uh, then came back to South Africa and and then started, you know, chipping away at the at the dream of going to Dakar to ride Dakar. And um, yeah, when I I was riding for a team here and and the boss said, listen, I'll help you get to Dakar, but you need to to win a South African national championship. So we know you've got the speed to go and uh, compete at Dakar. So uh, that was the deal. As soon as I won a championship, then we could start working on on getting to to Dakar. And yeah, probably the toughest part of our lives uh, for me and my family was was the first Dakar. You know, we had to raise over a hundred thousand dollars just to go there, and. Um, Luckily enough, uh, you know my my CV was pretty good. I didn't need to worry about doing a doing a qualification race, so we could afford it. Just to go to Dakar, I raised money, and we had to raise yeah over a hundred thousand dollars. And yeah, the first one was was really crazy. But uh, you know the guys that did come on board with me said to me, "Please, we just need to finish this year, and uh, after that we'll we'll go for for some some better results." So yeah, the first year, two thousand and nineteen, South America um, was good for me. You know, it was it was a big learning curve. I'd never ridden with the, with the navigation stuff. I'd, I'd only done probably three or four road books. Didn't even know what half of the noises meant. I didn't know what half of the, <laughs> the indications on the road book meant. Uh, <clears throat> I'll never forget the, the first uh, prologue, you know, it was 88 kilometers and uh, I stopped at every single organization vehicle to check that I was on the right track because I had no idea what the map was telling me. And it was really strange, <laughs> really is, odd. But um, is there yeah, any then way I, to mute this? <laughs> How do you mute this? It's beeping at me. It keeps beeping at me. 
I don't get it. <laughs> exactly. What is it telling me? You know, yeah. what is the beeping doing? And <laughs> Six, so 630 I was hours like, <laughs> of, of speed zone penalties, but whatever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it was, it was super strange for me, but, um, you know, I used, I used that rally to get into, to try and figure out how everything worked. And, uh, I managed to get uh, rookie of the year. Nice. So, and I finished 13th place. So it was, it was good for us. And then, um, you know, I really thought that I'd left something on the table and obviously there was, there was no offers or, or anything from some factory teams or any privateer teams that wanted to have me on board. So I knew that I had to go back again and, and just give it my all and see, see what the best was. Was I fast enough to, to run with the top guys, you know, and just give me some sort of sign that I could carry on rally racing. So we had to raise another hundred thousand dollars for the second year, which was just as much stress as the first year and a couple of sleepless nights. But um, yeah, then we went on to to the second year and I, I basically told all my sponsors I said okay well this is it we've got to go for it um you know we all in so we either we either going to to try and get a result where people open their eyes and see me or, or we're gonna go go home in a helicopter and uh, just give up on the rally dream um so yeah luckily enough uh, 2020 stage two I, I won it and I think that was, you know, just an indication for myself, you know, not for anyone else, but for me that, that I've got what it takes to, to win a stage. And obviously if you can win a stage at the Dakar these days, then you, then you in a good place to, to rally race. So I knew it was going to be a long road because, you know, the other guys have got so much more experience. They've got hundreds of road books under their belt compared to me of three or four road books. So, um, yeah, then, uh, that was it. That was the beginning really of, of a rally dream. And, uh, yeah, I just try to write as many road books as I could. You know, last year we did, I did a road book, you know, two road books every week for the whole entire year. And it was, it was, uh, yeah, I just needed to get the experience and try and catch up the, the missing, missing miles that I've, that I've missed with, uh, coming into rally a bit later than others. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was the dream. And, uh, yeah, now, yeah, really proud, really privileged to, to be on a, such an amazing team and to, to see the journey we've taken to get you to finally start paying off. You know, uh, I was even paying off some debt last year from our, our first Dakar. So it's, it's been a long, tough road, but, uh, we finally, finally made it into a position where we can look back and say every, every risk was worth it. And, uh, I think for the beginners and for everybody that wants to get into rally racing, I think guys need to go for it. You know, it's such an amazing sport. It's, uh, end of the day, it's not the fastest guy's going to win. It's a guy that can navigate the best at a good speed. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a really tough sport, but so much fun to do. And, uh, yeah, I really think that, uh, we need more people to get involved in the sport. It's, it is good fun. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that was, it, it, a hundred percent agree. I, you know, I think it's Matthew Glade that will go down in history for that is saying, you know, just, just look at the used gear market. You know, you look around and see yeah. how many people are selling stuff that they've previously purchased and you can't, you could jump on eBay and try and look for an Ico or for, and you're not going to find them, which is, no, which is, which yeah. is crazy. So obviously <clears throat> it shows the level of, 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 we'll go ahead and say addiction to, <laughs> to once you get started, on this, <laughs> you know, you get bitten exactly. by the bug, but so it's, it's something, I mean, you, you, so then you've seen the progression. I mean, I, you mentioned, you kind of alluded to it earlier about how they're trying to slow the guys down, you know, slow you guys down. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Victor with the Chasing Waypoints podcast. Hey, super quick break in the episode. Let's talk about it. We have got the newsletter. If you have not signed up for that already, get on over to the link in the description, head on over to the website and get signed up. So looking to bring you guys information on both Chasing Waypoints upcoming episodes, rally schools, rally events coming up, videos, all the stuff that we've got going on in the rally community here in North America and abroad. We're looking to share that with you guys. So if you haven't already, jump on over. Link is in the description. Head on over to the website, get signed up for the newsletter, and let's get back to the episode. How, like, you've seen how the road books have changed, right? I mean, is yeah, it, it, is it really? I mean, it, like a South American road book versus you know Saudi twenty twenty four. <laughs> are, are they two yeah, different things? <laughs> <clears throat> 
Yeah, for sure, you know, and it's really good to actually look back and see that because, you know, so many people forget of where rally racing came from and, and how they actually started. And and one of the things for me, I'm so passionate about the sports. I go back and I look at the road books from 1986, 1987, and you can't even compare the two, you know. So now we're just talking a quick five-year or six-year gap and uh, the road books from Peru are completely different to the road books from Saudi this year. And and obviously we go in the digital way, which is, which is going to be interesting for the sport as well. But um, – yeah, the rally's definitely changed. Uh, personally, I don't think they need to slow it down because rally racing is rally racing. I think uh, it's been like that since it started, and we just need to keep the keep the show on the road, you know, and not go not go too too hectic with with trying to slow it down or trying to make it more difficult. Uh, I think rally racing is already hard enough. Um, so yeah, I think we 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 actually in a good place now. Rally racing, uh, the progression has been good. You know, we've got a world championship. We haven't had a world championship. Uh, in a long time so we've got a really good world championship going at the moment so yeah i think uh, i think it's it's really good for the sport where we are going but um yeah i think they still need to just hold on to the to the good old days of rally racing and, and not to 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 try to do too many crazy things and and change the sport too much uh, it is a fantastic sport and we just need to to keep it as it is i think Okay, so so you would definitely be opposed to them making a 250 cc limit <laughs> on the bike. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> That's gonna give a whole For new sure, meaning to a doomsday. <laughs> For sure, I think, and it'll just be such a long day. You know, it's yeah. gonna be the bike will be revving so much more than a 450, and wow, it would be it would be really crazy. Yeah. But you know, on the other hand, maybe it's a little bit more affordable for people to come in that way. So I think uh, I think the ASO and the DACO just need to to work on on getting more people involved in the sport i think that's what we need we need a a future you know it always used to be when i was looking at dakar you know you could never come in as a 25 year old because you're too young you know you need to to come in at 35 years old 36 years old uh, with a bit of racing experience uh throughout your life and and come in so the older guys were always doing doing the dakar and uh now you see a lot more younger guys coming in but i think we need to you know you know push some more for even younger guys you need to start coming into Dakar at 20 years old, 25 years old, you know, that's, that's the age that you need to start coming in. And, and uh, I think ASO need to definitely push that just for the future of the sport. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, it, it definitely <clears throat> not, is not just seeing the younger crowd, you know, obviously it opens it up to, uh, to more people, but like junior programs. I mean, I know I was actually talking with Willem, uh, Avenon a few weeks ago about, you know, the new point system and how people are going to have to qualify to get into it. And it's, so it's like they're working towards it, but in, it, sometimes it feels like they are, and then sometimes it feels like they don't care. I, it probably sounds For bad, sure. but, you know, it's just like, yeah, which one? I mean, yeah, you know, you, it, you know, rally racing, I think we can all agree is, is when you're trying to, trying to, you know, put your foot in the door and trying to get into rally racing, you, it's so expensive, you know, a hundred thousand dollars just to enter the race and, yeah. and to go to Dakar and then uh, with the point system and, and, you know, like if we had this point system, when I was trying to get into rally, I probably would never have been able to get into it because it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. So I was never be, I would never be able to do a qualifying event before, you know? So I understand that they're trying to get people to, to come into rally and do do a cheaper one first and then go and do Dakar but at the same time I think um, yeah they they need to also you know like focus on the guys that have not not so much money and they want to come into the sport so I think they just need to you know open uh, open the vision and keep it a wide vision and and try and try and help as many people as we can get into to rally racing and get into the Dakar and stuff I think it's it's important but uh, yeah the numbers are healthy at Dakar for sure yeah. but uh, yeah you know it could it could uh, decline in a in a hurry and we just need to make sure we don't get that so yeah. so yeah I think uh, I think you hit the nail on the head sometimes they're trying to to push for the for the new guys to come into the sport at other times it's it's a little bit different so yeah we'll we'll just have to wait and see um obviously me being uh southern african if you want to call it that and uh, we try push it as much as we can i try get uh, as many guys as i can to come and train with me in namibia and try and just teach them the road book and and you know then it's it's way cheaper to do that uh, some people you know don't get it at all and and then, that, then it's a there's no point in going to spend uh, fifty thousand dollars at a at a morocco or something like that when you when you're not you're not going to get the navigation side of things so yeah i think um 
there's a lot we can still do, but uh, yeah, I think it's it's healthy at the moment. So we just got to keep it that way. Yeah, exactly. Don't don't let it dwindle. And I mean, and that's a that's a good point because now <laughs> now the entry barrier just went from a hundred thousand to one hundred and fifty thousand because you have to do a feeder race. And you actually probably exactly. even, maybe even have to do two or you run the risk of having yeah. to do two if you don't finish one. The You know, if you put all your money yeah. on Abu Dhabi and you don't finish it, well, now you got to go. <laughs> you got to go and do it all over again right. at one of the <laughs> other rounds. So, <clears throat> so it definitely makes it difficult. And so and, and speaking of, of difficult, and I think this was what did you think about the chrono stage this year? Is that yeah? A it good was. Move? <laughs> you know, I think the the idea behind it was amazing. Um, you know, if we take the riding out of it, then I would say that that it was such an amazing stage because you know Dakar is 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 so crazy at the moment. You don't actually get to to spend time with many competitors and and uh, if you want to call it, it's bench racing. So so we love the bench racing between all the competitors and and the whole uh, point behind the the chrono stage where we all get to sleep out in the middle of the dunes with nothing was was incredible you know it was it was so cool to be with all the guys and just hear their stories and and actually get to mingle and and talk to one another was absolutely awesome um the riding side of things i think they pushed the barriers a little bit too much you know riding eight hours a day and and i mean the the top guys the yeah yeah exactly the the front runners did 512 k's in the dunes it's it's ridiculous you know it was it was crazy and you know mentally for us it, it really push the limits and and push the boundaries but also on the other side you know it was it took the racing side away a little bit because everybody was so scared to break a bike so Mm -hmm. i think um you know i think everyone was 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 going a little bit uh slower just to 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 look after the bikes which yeah i guess is is a part of the whole dakar scenario but uh, i think 500 k's in the dunes was a little bit too much but um yeah it was it was good i think they needed to change it up a little bit i think it made it exciting for everybody watching the the dakar back home and uh and obviously, uh, strategy played a huge part this year. You know, there was no no one really knew what the strategy was like, and and which was a good strategy, which was a bad strategy. So I think it, it definitely mixed the race up a little bit. But yeah, um, all in all, I enjoyed it. It's just uh, the the five hundred and twelve k's in the dunes was a little bit too much. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's kind of the feeling I got. Right? <laughs> I'm like, I mean, ten minutes in the dunes is too much for me. I don't actually ever. I haven't actually ridden in the dunes. But that's a more or less what I think is going to happen. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to yeah, walk Yeah, that's back. exactly it. <laughs> so, so I think that, so I, I could see in a, in a picture, like I can see in a future where, I mean, this time around it, it almost like you had to be paying attention to almost realize that you missed the marathon stage. Cause usually, you know, the Dakar 2023, you know, the Dakar, marathon stage you know this is the where riders are all you know they they hype it up so big and this year it was like yeah. they forgot about it and like look hey look here's the new shiny thing it's the chrono <laughs> stage so i, I part yeah. of me feels like they're gonna i mean i i feel like they may even in a future just say like we're gonna scrap the marathon stage and we're just gonna do two chrono stages uh you know something you know to that effect maybe i because everybody like you like what you're saying the the people that I've talked to have kind of shared that sentiment. Like, it's really cool. I'm not sure about so much dunes, but I like the idea, you know? Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you, you correct. I think it's going to go that way for sure. And especially now, you know, that it was, you know, everybody at home was commenting on it. It's, it's not only about the riders, but it's about the audience that the Dakar gets. And I think there were so many comments, positive comments about the chrono stage because, you know, everyone was so interested in it. And I, and I think that everybody was, was glued to the, to the TV screens and the, and the app during that chrono stage, because nobody really knew who was going to win. And it's, it's two days of suspense, you know, it's uh, two days of wondering where the guys are. And, and obviously, you know, with Dakar showing the guys that are also at the back of, of what it's like to do that chrono stage at the back. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if, we have a couple more, but uh, I don't think the the organization will make us do what we did this year. I think they saw as well that it, ju- it just t- it took out like one third of the whole uh, all the all the biking competitors at least, you know. So it yeah. was it was yeah. you know definitely a high nutrition rate. So <laughs> we're sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys. Yeah, sorry. Uh, and I think that <laughs> yeah. I think they had to rescue everyone out the dunes, which is harder for them than it was for anyone else. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's you know, and it's and it's interesting. I, I 
I happen to know that there is a whole nother team. Uh, so, uh, you know, I've worked uh, hand in hand with the ASO at Sonora Rally, and I was brought on to the or I was introduced to the whole thing that there's a whole separate team that does rescues and, and recovery. <clears throat> yeah for the day <laughs> so they have a whole team that does the ones the day previous day and the day before that you know they have a backlog <laughs> yeah. of people out in the desert that they need to grab it says, <laughs> i mean it's crazy but in the meantime we get to see you know that oh well you know so and so at the top list this and then that's it you know the bike got rescued and that's it but you yeah. have no idea the, of the other 130 motorcycles that are out there you know and how they're yeah, that are stuck in the middle of the dunes and <laughs> yeah and yeah. Yeah, that's it. And yeah, it's it's really crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But I mean, hey, you know, here we, here we are. We, we we enjoy watching it. I enjoy keeping track of the kids, as I say. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's, For a sure. lot. it's a lot of fun. So, OK, so it, yeah. I mean, in, in closing and I kind of the the one question I like to ask is, OK, so Hero says we need you to go testing race pace, full support. Bike is ready to go. We will fly it anywhere in the world. Where, where are you going? Yeah. What's the, what's the stage? What's that's the, a, <laughs> that's a really good question. Um, I've been fortunate enough and, and lucky enough to, to travel a lot and, and go and train, um, with, with a lot of different people in a lot of different places. Um, obviously I've done the, the normal, the Dubai's, the Morocco's and stuff. Uh, I would like to go back to South America somewhere for sure. But on the other hand, you know, Namibia is, is so good for training. We've got everything. Uh, we've got, the, the open desert, we've got the dunes, we've got the ocean, we've got the cold weather, we've got the hot weather, we've got a mix of everything. We've got some, some really hard navigation, some really easy navigation. So, you know, I'm really happy with Namibia and we've changed and the whole team is actually coming out and training and, and that's what we did last year for the first time. So I think it worked really well for us and worked in our favor. We've got some good road books there. It's relatively new. No, uh, no one's been riding there yet. So yeah, um, I would say go back to Namibia. <laughs> Nice. All right. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's because I, I think that's like that's the thing with with rally, you know, and 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 really, actually, it's kind of at any level, even at the U.S. with the very limited amount of rallies that we have. If you were to commit a whole season, you know, like, I, you know, Willem and I have talked about this and it's like, you know, the a lot of people will ju will judge people by the Dakar. You know, it's like, well, have you done the yeah. Dakar? But but there's For so sure. many other rallies and so many other places to see. I mean, you could literally just travel the world doing these small little rallies and get to see yeah. so many things with the cost of and one so, Dakar. Such a Exactly. And so many amazing places. I mean, there's some of the rallies I look at, I follow, I follow a lot of rally pages and everything. And, and, you know, for instance, uh, they, they back in Saudi Arabia doing a Baja rally now and, uh, going through some amazing terrain again, you know? So if you go to the Sonora rally was, was one of my favorites, you know, it was the people are so friendly. You get to see so many different cultures. So for sure, if you take a, a budget that you're going to spend on Dakar plus the qualifying race, you could probably race around the whole world, uh, for the same amount of money and go to some really special places. So definitely. And, you know, I think rally does that for a country and, and for a place it's, it brings out the beauty and takes you to places that you'd never go and visit unless you're racing bikes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, you know, if you want to, if you want to see the world, right. <laughs> it's easier for sure. the road, road <laughs> and, book. and having fun, yeah. <laughs> having fun I, doing it. <laughs> very true. I mean, the rally crowd is, is, is definitely different. And so actually, you know what? I, I, I apologize. I lied. I've just thought of another question and only <laughs> and only this question because of what you mentioned earlier about, you know, what traveling with your, your dad to go see the, you know, the last day of the race, the Africa eco race, yeah. would you consider doing that oh. because of the new route or uh, basically they've taken yeah, over definitely. the old Dakar. I mean, that's for sure. Yeah, I would definitely, I would love to do it. You know, uh, I've actually spoken to our team about it. And, uh, you know, if it was a different time of the year and didn't interfere with uh, any world championships or with Dakar, then maybe it would be a possibility. But I think uh, I follow it really closely while it's on, while I can. You know, unfortunately, this year they, they clashed a lot with Dakar. So mm -hmm. I followed the first half of the race and uh, a couple of my friends were riding it and it, it looked like like amazing. You know, I think it would be cool just to, just to say that you've done it. You know, obviously, 
coming from Africa. We've got the, the legend Alfie Cox and uh, I speak to him a lot about rally racing and, and what it was like. And he said, Ross, it's like completely different in Africa to what we have now. So, you know, just to, to, to see what they've, they've been through and what they did and what the kind of uh, our terrain and, and what it was like, you know, it's not only about terrain. I think Dakar is, is hugely about the culture and the, the, the cities and the places that you go through. I think Dakar definitely is a, is a big thing like that, you know, so to see what they went through, what they rode through, I mean, you hear all these crazy stories about, oh yeah, I broke down and then <clears throat> I had to stay there until the, till the truck came and that was 24 hours later. <laughs> Meanwhile, these days, you know, you, you picked up within like 20 minutes, there's a helicopter there or there's, there's one of the organization vehicles there to pick you up. So I think it's, it's completely different. And, and I would like to see what they went through. You know, they said they had no, no service. They had, they had no communication with the outside world for, for days on end. So definitely, uh, I would like to do it one day. Um, you know, maybe after Dakar days, I'm not too sure yet, but, um, we'll see, you know, I think, I think everyone should start working together and try and, uh, include it in a championship for sure. It would be fun to have it, but, yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like it is what it is. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know if there's maybe some old school, you know, ASO that that are maybe a little bit jealous of, you know, that they're basically taking over the route of the of the Dakar of old. You know, I, the OG. The OG. Might, yeah, there might be a little bit of, but, but you know, I, I, I guess that's right. And and like you, you know, I I had a chance to do uh, to sit down and and speak with uh, uh, Lauren Lassard. Um, yeah. And, and he was telling me some of those crazy, you know, minefields and, and roads that had to be cut because, (laughs) you know, don't go off course because we don't know if there's mines there. So just stay where we cut the, I'm like, you know, yeah, crazy stories blown away. It's like, wow. So yeah, yeah, I think it would be, I I, I, I agree with you is, is that it would be really awesome to see them work a little more together you know, and, and split the rallies apart, you know, do something. But then I, I also know in that part of the world, it's, you know, it all comes down to weather. So, you know, you, you either do it or you can't. Yeah. You know, and I think uh, one of the stories that always stuck with me, it was Alan DeClaw. He was, uh, he was a stage winner from Dakar back in the day. And uh, he was helping me a lot, you know, going to my first and second Dakar, he helped me with with a lot of things. And he just told me a story about the African uh, Dakar that he, he rode for so long that he saw no forms of life. There was no plants, there was no grass, there was nothing. And uh, he got to the end of a six or 700 kilometer stage and he saw a field with, with grass. And he said that he was, so happy to see something living that he went and he lay in the grass for 20 minutes he just lay in the grass and was so happy to see it and i was just like wow that's it's the kind of crazy stories that you'd never think of you know he yeah. said he said that he'd never seen uh such an open space in his entire life he'd never seen anything like it so you know things like that would stick with me and i think if we had to get uh get into that area obviously you know safety is a big concern these days and and with with big rallies going to to places like where terrorism is there and you know there's a threat then uh, i think they so stay away from it so Damn. yeah I, I really hope in the future we could get one there or <clears throat> even better come to to southern africa and have a rally here you know it would be a dream come true yeah. but uh yeah hopefully we can get into the back into to africa and and have a rally i think it would be it would be really cool nice yeah i think that you know again <laughs> continue to continue to expand the sport and then allow you know, even if it was like a Dakar mini or something along those lines where they're, For sure. yeah. you know, again, geared yeah. towards the, you know, the qualifying events, something a little bit more basic to allow more people in and, and at least start on the road to qualifying. You know, we already know they're making it difficult to get into the main show, the Dakar, but it's for sure. Like you said, you know, so yeah. kind of tone it down a little bit and get people in there. Yeah, make yeah. it a make it a little bit cheaper, make it affordable for people, and and like I suggested to them, you know, maybe we need something like a like a wild card entry, or maybe say, hey, we're going to Mexico for Sonora Rally. You know, 10, 10 citizens of Mexico will get an entry fee at five thousand euros instead of ten thousand euros, kind of thing. You know, so yeah. I think there is there's a couple of ways that we could do it, but uh, yeah. yeah, you know, there is there's a lot of people that want to do it, and I think ASO have to have to make sure that they they get the right people into Dakar, so. Yeah. We'll see what happens in the future, but definitely pushing to promote the sport and get uh, get the people that haven't had a chance of, of of rally life yet and get them into the game for sure. 
Nice. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree. I mean, and there's and, and it's just working together, and with a lot of people, is just like, okay, you know, wh- what are the recipes? That's a lot of the stuff that I try and share. You know, is like, okay, these are the this is where it starts. You know, and if you know, yeah, the how to, yeah, yeah, how to get involved. You know, yeah, for yeah. sure. Either Definitely. whether it's like a volunteer or if it's <clears throat> printing out a road book to the local coffee shop, whatever. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. You, you just, for sure. You got to start somewhere. You know, so okay. So, so no, closing. Definitely. What's uh, okay? Two. Uh, you got what? Two weeks to Abu Dhabi. Yeah, we got a couple of weeks now to Abu Dhabi, and uh, yeah, then after that we got Portugal and then Argentina, which I'm really excited about, and I think it's going to be, you know, to one thing to start off Dakar with, I uh, start off the year with a Dakar like that is is awesome for me personally. You know, it's it sets us up for for a, for a good year, and we just got to keep it on two wheels, keep the wheels turning, and and yeah, you know, now at least we've got some sort of opportunity to give the best we can for the World Championship, and we we don't start on the back foot like we did last year. So I think it's going to be, yeah, I'm just going to make sure that it's a good year for us and, and have some fun. You know, I really enjoy traveling to these cool places and, and rally racing is, is my life at the moment and really enjoying every second of it. So going to do that. And then, yeah, like I say, I've got an off season where I'm going to go fly some airplanes. And uh, the cool thing is is doing some road books up in the up in the Okavango Delta. You know, uh, last year I came across a, a lot of different things and uh, elephants and lions. And there were some good things coming across on a motorbike. So it was interesting. So nice. it keeps the excitement up when I'm not racing. So <laughs> yeah, nice. looking forward to a nice, uh, nice strong year this year. So, so I mean, that is, I mean, it, the, the ability to in your backyard, have the road books, have to be able to do all of that stuff, get all that. And then hero backing you and you guys are doing the full season and traveling the world. I mean, this is, I, I'm, I'm excited to see this because it's like, <laughs> it's the year, you know, that, that heroes kind of been, you know, working towards. And ever since you joined with them, it's just been this like constant progression. So <laughs> Yeah, and it's, it's it's exciting times for everybody, and I think uh, I think everyone's still on the edge of their seats. You know, everyone's uh, motivated from Dakar, so I think it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting one. And yeah, we're just gonna have some fun, and uh, that's why we that's why we race is because we we love the sport, and I'm really proud and privileged to be in the position I am to go and travel the world and just do what I love doing. So really happy at the moment. Very nice. <clears throat> and so my question is this: is when you're on the plane, are you critiquing how the guys are landing? <laughs> are, are you are, I, I could have landed in, <laughs> <laughs> this guy gets his pilot's license two days ago <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. He's he's got sweaty hands when he has a bad landing. So I'm like, I know the feeling. Don't worry. <laughs> meanwhile, the rest of us. Meanwhile, the rest of the passengers are clapping. <laughs> yes, that was a good one. Yes, yeah. uh, like they, like they say, any landing that you can walk away from is a good one. So <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like that's true. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Well, Rossi, I, I greatly appreciate you taking the time i know it's uh, early in the morning for you i don't know if you're a morning person nah, but it's I, yeah i love the mornings in botswana are the best you know it gets up to 40 degrees celsius here in botswana so uh, early mornings is the time for training and uh, just being grateful for what we've got so yeah for sure and uh, i love talking to you guys and a big thank you to to lizzie for putting this together she's yes. awesome and yeah. uh yeah the, <laughs> really really cool and uh, thank you so much for having me on the show i really appreciate it yeah. and hopefully uh, we can get some good results at the end. Chat to you guys again soon. Absolutely, yeah. We will definitely be glued and following along. I've, I'm, I think I've pretty much committed <laughs> to doing the series now, keeping an eye on you guys. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, Ross. Thank you so, Thank so you much. Thank you very much. Okay. Enjoy, and we'll, we'll talk soon. Definitely. Have a good day, right. man. You too. Thank you. See ya. Bye. All right. So there you have it. Mr. Ross Branch, the Kalahari Ferrari. Did you know what the Kalahari, did you know where that came from? I didn't. I literally, I was like, spent the last, I don't know, two, two hours. I'm like, this has, there's gotta be something clever behind it. And then all of a sudden it was some random interview that I saw. And I was like, look at all these nicknames around the bivouac. And I'm like, oh my God, are you serious? So very nice, very awesome. Uh, you know, doing a lot of research and and really, it did come out, you know, it's like, okay, well, Hero Motorsports, the Hero Bikes, we started looking and and I saw this, you know, I saw this on the Dakar Daily. This is where I found out that Hero Motorsports or Hero Motorcycles, you know, being one of the largest manufacturers, 
uh, in the world of motorcycles, you know, commuter bikes, scooters, things like that. Uh, previous partnerships with some of the major brands and building and doing bikes and then kind of striking it out on their own and making it happen to now this, you know, the hero motorsports team rally bikes is hero motorsports division, you know, that's, they don't do any, they're not worried, you know, at least from what I see, they're not necessarily worried about like, okay, we're going to take the suspension setup, the chassis geometry and all of that stuff from this 450 rally bike. And we're going to put it in this production bike. They don't care. They make, they literally, I didn't know, but it sounds like they actually have acquired speed brain who originally did the bikes for them uh, and say, okay, you are now our, we, this is, we build race bikes. That's what we do. So I think it's very awesome to see that. And I, you know, when you have, and that was why they asked the question is like, okay, well, when you have the pick of the litter, I have no, you know, I, I can make this bike. And if I want to make it an MX frame today, and I want to make it a, la a trellis frame tomorrow, I can do that. I can build whatever I want. I have no restriction. I have no 10 years down the road, this is going to be a production bike. So we got to make sure it's good. You know, you don't have to do that. And so how do you change it and say, this is the best. This is literally what we want. You know, this is how we're going to design. We're going to take the best from this, the best from that. I'm going to say it. I'm not really sure, you know, who they picked, but based on what I could see on some of the pictures, it's pretty well covered up, but I have a feeling that it might be WP forks on the front of it. I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. You know, but that's the whole thing. It's like you get a chance to pick all of the best things, you know, all of the things that you say, like, okay, well, this is the best of this. You know, who knows? Maybe it's a WP front fork with a Showa rear shock. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, who knows? What if we did MX tech? Hmm. Maybe some MX tech stuff would be kind of cool, but I don't know. You know, I think that that's the cool part. And then maybe what we see is that they develop, you know, as Ross was kind of mentioning, you know, in the change and how they're trying to slow down the Dakar and trying to do different things. Maybe what we end up seeing is a change in, okay, well, this is our, you know, as long as they don't mandate it, they say, okay, this is our Dakar bike. Why? Because big long dune sections, 200 kilometers, you know, of, of flat out, you know, right on the rev limiter, right on the, you know, uh, versus other stages or other rallies where okay this is tighter and more technical and you know we could really benefit from running a mx style frame bike maybe a couple liters less in fuel because it's more hard pack it's not the dunes we know we're not going to be consuming as much fuel you know i you know who knows would they even go that far because then at the same time it's like well it starts playing tricks with the riding style maybe uh, they lose out on precious development time, you know, because I'm sure like any other race team, every time the bike goes out, it's development, you know, it's not just for when you say, okay, you know, like, you know, we'll take, for example, one of the biggest teams on the radar this year at the Dakar in 2024 was the Kove team, you know, that they were, I mean, they were upfront about it. Hey, these are some things, these are the things that we found with the bike that are wrong and that need further development and we're doing it right now and these bikes that are at the factory aren't leaving until we do this to them you know so it turns out you know that that obviously racing is a development program we already know that but then furthermore it's also like what they do in the off season and how you know between the rallies and what they develop and what they're able to do i mean it's not like formula one right you know formula one 32.2 minutes of you know wind tunnel time you know, and you can't do this and you have this budget and don't overspend on the shrimp because then you won't have enough for the tires and the lug nuts cost too much this year. So you're going to have to cut back on the salad dressing and, you know, all of these different things that go back and forth and budgets and stuff like that. So it's really curious to see, like we said, you know, hey, if you had a great relationship with American Express and you could buy anything you want for a race bike and make anything you wanted out of it, which way would you go? So it sounds like that's what Hero Motorsports has done with their bikes and that's what they're developing. And I think that it is going to be, they're going to be the team to watch. I mean, it's them versus Honda for this year's events, you know, the World Rally Raid Championship. So we'll see, you know, it's obviously it's going to be one of the two bikes. I think Honda's got a really strong team this year. Hero's going to have their work cut out for them. But if Hero can continue to disrupt that, you know, you have Beretta, you have Ross Branch, you know, on the team, both very, very good riders, you know, so who knows? I don't know. 
What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Would you buy a hero if you could? If they said, okay, if they lined up the KTM, if if they were all five thousand dollars, KTM, Fantic, uh, Hero, Akove, you know, which one would you go for? What would be the bike? Hmm? What do you guys think? So if you're on Spotify, you know what to do. Hit that Q and A section. Drop what you think. What would you do? What would you be writing? If they all were $5,000 or you had the corporate credit card, which one would you buy? So if you're on YouTube and watching this, drop the comment down below. What did you guys think? Who should we get next? We are going to be taking a little bit of a break on the interviews for the next couple of weeks. Uh, it'll probably just be some solo stuff on what I'm working on and prep stuff. We've got Coast to Coast Rally getting ready to leave for that one here in just a few weeks. Uh, actually, next week. <laughs> So that one's sneaking up. We're doing development. If you guys saw, I posted a story earlier today doing some stuff with the rally comp, doing some testing around the house, you know, just making sure, just looking at some things, figuring out how things work, you know, always be testing just like the right, just like the race teams do. So very awesome stuff there developing along that. Uh, and then right behind that, we've got the SoCal rally, which I am looking forward to. I have got a Husky 501 that I need to prep uh, before the COVID. There's the COVID is coming. I just need to. Anybody know who wants a 790 with uh, 4,000-ish miles on it? Just saying. I got one in the garage. But that's the plan. You know, uh, I got the 501. I got to get ready. I want to do some riding, do some more videos. I'm sure, you know, this is, uh, you know, I enjoy doing the podcast and talking to people and meeting all that stuff. And we're going to have some great campfires and some great conversations out of the rally. And uh, I'm absolutely excited for that. I'm absolutely excited to see the bivouacs uh, coming up in a, in a week or so here. Uh, for the Coast to Coast Rally, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. So, I don't know. We'll see. All right. Well, that is a wrap for today's show. I appreciate you guys tuning in, whether wherever that may be from. If that is uh, over on the podcast side of things, or if you're watching this on YouTube, it's greatly appreciated. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe, do all this stuff. Hit the bell notification. Yeah, hit the bell notifications if you're on YouTube. And then uh, if you are on Spotify, you're probably already a subscriber, and I appreciate that. If you're on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, YouTube Podcasts, uh, iHeartRadio, there's about 10 different channels, all sorts of stuff. So I appreciate everybody that's tuning into the shows. Absolutely excited to see what the 2024 season holds. We got a lot coming. Uh, doing some more videos and stuff tomorrow. We'll have some more updates for you guys. Got a lot of products going. Got a lot of really cool stuff. I did some really cool things for the 501 and getting it ready uh, that I'm very, like I'm literally, I've been up since three in the morning. It is now 10 o'clock at night. And I'm literally amped to, to just get in the garage, clean up a little bit because it looks like a hurricane went through there uh, and and get the, the 501 ready. I'll to, you know, triple clamps, shark fins, just bolt on cool stuff. And, you know, I don't know. I have the worst shiny object syndrome. It's horrible. <laughs> Absolutely horrible. Anyway, okay. That is a wrap, guys. Remember, it'll make sense when you get there. Enjoy the ride. All right. That is a wrap for the Chasing Waypoints podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Looking forward to our next one coming up. Remember, if you are out riding, do not forget to tag us at Chasing Waypoints. Hashtag Chasing Waypoints. And if you haven't already, get on over to the website. Get signed up for the newsletter, The Bivouac. North America's Rally Raid and Adventure Riding newsletter hey let's have some fun let's find out what are you guys up to let's get you featured if you're a brand and looking to get supported get some eyeballs get some ears on your business absolutely hit us up send us a message at podcast at chasing waypoints but anyway that is a wrap remember shiny side up see you guys